Hi, welcome to this presentation on calculating chime length. I've got my guitar here and I'm going just to introduce a few things about music and sound and thinking about how you can determine the length that your chime should be in order to achieve notes that will be harmonious or musical. So one thing to keep in mind as we get started is that the word pitch equals frequency. And so we'll be talking about the pitch of different notes, which just means the frequency of those notes. And as you've experimented with in some of our activities and so forth, we know that uh, these those higher frequency notes uh, are creating higher pitches and lower frequency notes are creating lower pitches. So the chime length, the length of the chime, is going to affect the natural frequency of that chime, the frequency at which it will vibrate naturally. And that is going to create different lengths, or wavelengths, of standing waves. So in the standing waves lab, we observe some different uh, standing waves that can form in a spring and also look a little bit into uh, how standing waves form, form in an open-ended air column, which would be like uh, a pipe with both ends open. And when you strike that pipe, the vibrations of the air inside the pipe will create different standing wave patterns that we call harmonics. So the first term I want to introduce is octave, and an octave is just an interval in music between notes with frequencies or wavelengths that are either double or half of each other. So you see in the example, the note A, uh, here's a standard A on a guitar at 440 hertz. There's 440 hertz A. Now if I double the frequency of that note, if I go to 880 hertz, I'm also playing A just an octave higher. There's 880 hertz. And then if I double that again, I go to 1760, 1760, and here's A at 1760 hertz. Okay, so 440, 880, 1760. All of those notes are A notes, Basically, they play in unison. They're just at different octaves. Now, you can see I could also take that 440 and cut it in half and play an A note that's 220 hertz, but I can't actually play that on my guitar because my guitar doesn't go down that low in terms of the notes, but uh, I can play the other ones, the 440. So that's an octave. And once we know what an octave is, then we can talk about musical scales. So musical scales are just notes that sound good together within an octave. So between that 440 and that 880, there are notes we could play that would sort of go along with uh, an A major scale. Now on the right side, you see there's a C major scale. Uh, and the C major scale is just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it goes from C to C, and the notes in between are just called D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The C major scale is kind of the easiest one because it doesn't have any other fancy notes in it or, or sharps or flats or other things like that. But these notes in the scale are just based on simple mathematical relationships of the frequency. So to go from an octave, we're just doubling the frequency or cutting it in half. To get the other notes in that scale, we would be uh, looking at different ratios. So for example, multiplying by 1.5 or uh, 1.25 or whatever. So here's a C major scale. I'll play the C major scale. Okay. You can hear it's a sequence of eight notes going from low C to the next C up. Now there are different types of scales. For example, there are major scales and there are minor scales. If I was going to play C minor scale, it sounds just a little bit different. Here's the C minor, here's the C major. And the C minor. Okay, so uh, there are different types of scales which can relate to you know, different chords and so forth that you have in songs. And so I guess that's the, the last thing to mention about scales here is that we use these notes in the scale to make what's called chords. So I'm going to play a C major chord. All right, so I'm hitting 
uh, five of the six strings on my guitar to make that chord. And the notes I'm playing there are C, E, and G. And I'm playing a couple of C's and a couple of E's and one G, but C, E, and G makes up a C major chord. So if I play those three notes together, I'm going to have uh, something that sounds good and it sounds in a major key. And if you look at the C major scale there, if we just count the notes, C is note number one, D is number two, E is number three, F is number four, and G is number five. So in a C major chord, I have C, E, G, which is the first note, the third note, and the fifth note in the scale. So how do you use this information? Well, basically what you have to do is use a reference length as a starting point. For example, if I uh, started out with a pipe that was 100 centimeters long, that pipe is going to produce a certain frequency. Uh, the standing waves will produce certain frequencies, and I can basically use that starting point to determine uh, the, the other lengths that I need. So if I start out with, say, a 100 centimeter length pipe, I can then determine which notes in a scale are needed. Uh, so for example, if I was going to make that C major chord, I know that I need the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. All right, and uh, Or I might be doing something different, like the notes of a melody. I might decide I want the first note, the fourth note, um, an octave, and a sixth note, or whatever. Uh, different chimes related to a certain melody. But I'm going to be able then to calculate the relative lengths based on that reference pipe. Now we're not going to be able to tune the pipes exactly to certain notes. So if I said, oh your pipe has to be exactly C, that's going to be really difficult to do because you'd have to somehow uh, be able to sort of test out different lengths to tune it because each different, the different materials are going to have slightly different sounds and so forth. But you could you could get close um, if you wanted to by calculating calculating some uh, lengths, but in any case, let's just say we're starting with 100 centimeter, and that makes a sound that that I sort of like, so I want to go off of that. What I'm going to do then is use these known ratios to calculate my different lengths, and here's the whole list of them. You can see at the top a unison, which means the same note. The ratio would be one. So if I take 100 centimeters times one, uh, I would create a pipe with exactly the same note. Now if I wanted to major third, you can see I just multiply the length by either five-fourths or by four-fifths, depending if I want to make it longer or if I want to make it shorter. Um, if I needed a major sixth, I could measure, I could multiply it by five-thirds or by three-fifths. Uh, it's really up to me what I want to do, and uh, I just use these simple ratios. Now again, these are these, these simple mathematical relationships uh, that make up the scale. Now this chart is available here at tinyurl.com uh, slash yrdscv. So you don't need to copy this all down or anything, or, or you can just use this slide. Uh, it's in the shared folder. But in any case, uh, those ratios are, are good to have handy. So here's an example. If my reference pipe was 200 centimeters, if I was starting with a 200 centimeter length, and I needed to get a major third, I wanted to make a major chord with a major third in the scale, uh, I could just multiply 200 centimeters by 5 fourths, which is 1.25, to get 250 centimeters long. That would increase my length by 5 fourths, and it would decrease my pitch by 4 fifths. So if the length gets longer, the pitch is going to go down. Now, if I wanted to use shorter lengths, I could just multiply 200 centimeters by 4 fifths, so doing it the other way around, you get 160 centimeters, my length then would decrease by four fifths, and my pitch would increase by five fourths. So my pitch would go up. That might seem a little bit confusing, but I think once you sit down and, and start working it out after you do the reference pipe analysis, um, you'll see that it's just a simple multiplication. And of course, if you double the length of the pipe, then you've just you know gone gone uh, down an octave, or if you've cut a pipe in ha length in half, you've gone up an octave, so that's the other way to look at it. Uh, so a couple things to remember. One is just if you increase the length, you're going to lower the frequency. If you decrease the length, you'll increase the frequency. Uh, you must have at least three different notes in your chime, so you can have more than that. Uh, it could sound really good to have 
a couple of different notes that, for example, uh, different octaves of the same note or uh, whatever, but you do have to have at least three different notes. And the total length of your chimes must be 275 to 300 centimeters. So after you do these calculations and you figure out you know, the relative lengths that you need, you'll need to add them up. And if they don't fall within the range that you need, then you'll have to either scale them all down or scale them all up in order to make it so that you're at 275 to 300. But um, we'll get to that if, if you run into that issue. So anyway, hopefully you found this presentation helpful. And uh, good luck as you uh, work on your designs.